Hello and welcome guys to the Leicester City Football Club Season Roundup where we talk about the weirdest season ever to happen in a football calendar year that is the 2019-2020 season. So this season was a mixed bag for me straight away. As we saw our club captain Wes Morgan take a step back and not play throughout most of the season and new lads stepping in to rebuild the team for a long term. I hope that's the case here because if you critically analyze the season I still think there are a lot of promising in the new squad and a lot of positives to talk about but let's just start with the elephant in the room about being so dominant in that third place most of the season and then finishing the season without Champions League football of course it's a letdown but hear me out we got to remember the facts and the situations that went through this year. Let's start with the main man, Jamie Vardy, our main fox for the season. Well, after Mares left for Manchester City, Vardy really did not have a striking partner to go the distance with him. Vardy almost always scores his goals as a fox in the box. So it's crucial that assists are provided. The balls are through to him or they come in form of crosses but that really didn't happen the last season. However, this season we saw Iose Perez, Harvey Barnes, Demari Gray, James Madison providing Vardy with those crucial assists this season. Landing him up with the golden boot in the Premier League. Being a golden boot winner in the Premier League is one of the hardest jobs to achieve because if you remember in the past decade there has been great strikers who are far more talented than Vardy has won it. I'll tell you who won it in the 2010-2011 season there was joint winners Carlos Tevez, Dimitar Barvatov both belonging to the teams in Manchester, Manchester City and Manchester United. They scored 20 goals each to clinch the Golden Boot Trophy of the Premier League. Next season, 2011-2012, very famous, Robin Van Persie winning the Golden Boot as an Arsenal player, scoring 30 goals in that season, so a phenomenal record. The next season, he wins it again. But this time, Robin Van Persie wins it with Manchester United with 26 goals. 2013 to 14 season saw Luis Suarez of Liverpool winning the Golden Boot, 31 goals to his name. 2014 15 season saw Sergio Aguero of Manchester City winning the Golden Boot with, with 26 goals. 2015 16 and 2016 17 season both were won by Harry Kane of Tottenham Hotspur by 24 goals in the first and 29 goals with the, in the second season. 2017 18 season Mo Salah won it for Liverpool 32 goals to that to for him in that season so you see Mo Salah was very dominant in that season and of course uh, dominance shown in that season the next season he carries the form in 2018-19 season he wins the golden boot for the second time along with two others Aubameyang and Sadio Mane his teammate so Aubameyang wins it for Arsenal and Sadio Mane belonging to the same team as Mo Salah, Liverpool, each of them has 22 goals and 19-20 season where there were spectacular strikers in this game, so many different goal scorers still, Jamie Vardy wins it with just 23 goals to his name. So to give credit to where credit is due, Vardy now has three-way support feeding him the chances to score and he's so good at converting them that needs special talent and of course is damn praiseworthy but to be honest with you we didn't see Vardy do much after the season restart and that happened mainly because of the unlucky injuries that kept on happening to Leicester City Football Club so let's talk about the defense first let's go from there Daniel Amarte was a key player to rely upon after Ricardo Pereira in that crucial right back position and they both had injuries that ruled them out for the season so already we have a place where the reserve right back who eventually steps up is lacking 
the Premier League experience that eventually hurted us throughout the remainder of the season and it did so painfully. But then comes James Justin in desperate need to provide something extraordinary in this season. After the restart, I have seen him understand both the game of defence and offence in his own way. Yes, sure, you can see he's not perfect, but he's certainly a good player. He definitely didn't leave the right back position up for grabs for the opposition to expose that space. He brilliantly ran as a right winger and tried his best upon his ability to do so. And there is time for him to learn and better his skills and come back far more effective next season. And there is hope in that for us as fans. Desperate times for the rise of James Justin to really do something beautiful that needs appreciation with his playing minutes. Now coming to the other side of our defensive lineup, our main left back was Ben Chilwell. And let me tell you what a magnificent left back he was for English football as a whole, not just for Leicester City Football Club, but as defenders of English English football. 27 matches he played and as a left back he had 3 goals and 3 assists and even after the restart he probably had a goal of the season kind of a goal for Leicester City Football Club. You remember that? Running at the edge of the box curling it in. So good to see. Even big clubs are crazily interested in him to get him into their squads. Allegedly Lampard would like to possess him into his Chelsea for next season but I would prefer him not to go this season as Leicester City Football Club can still cook it up and big things can be aspired for next season. Definitely don't want Chilwell to go. And I'll talk about other players as well, not just Chilwell. There are several players I don't want to leave this club at this moment, not for the next season, not at this moment because we have something special going on here. And bear with me to understand what it is. And that's a beautiful goal from Marcus Rashford. Bloody hell, that was that was just cheesy. Anyway, I'm just I'm just playing this match to show you that how the teams vary, their ratings, everything, their talent. Even a simulation of football can can easily show you that Manchester United out of ten, nine times they will win. Because Leicester is a far less dominant side and that's what this video is about to appreciate the football that Leicester City played this season despite having a far far weaker squad just like they did back in the Premier League winning days. Okay, hear me out. So um allegedly allegedly Lampard would like to possess Chilwell into his Chelsea for next season but I would prefer him not to go this season as we can still cook it up I told you that but yeah coming back to the restart Chilwell gets injured and he is eventually ruled out for the remainder of the season as well the bench player for the left back position you would think that uh, okay uh, Chilwell is injured we should have a bench player for the left back position we are not Barcelona but um, no, no, you, you are dead wrong. The bench player for left back position, our main man, Christian Foots, was injured as well. So do you see a pattern here? Both left backs and right backs are injured and their bench counterparts are injured as well. Now, if you talk about the most influ influential upcoming young players of the season, it has to be the midfielders. I'm not talking about Leicester City, I'm talking about... Premier League as a whole and only English players so yeah Bruno Fernandes doesn't count so the likes of Jack Grealish Mason Mount and James Madison really made the people to be awestruck by the special performances for their respective clubs in their own way we had James Madison who was beyond great this season a classic number 10 player just 23 years of age and with a reason to remember him for. Now his stats show me that he created 82 chances for goals to happen with 79 key passes in the season. That's really something 
and he is a special player for us and we relied heavily for his services to prosper in the Premier League and the FA Cup after the restart but even he was injured just sat on the stands each day to watch us play and uh, believe me if you were watching those matches James Madison in his uh, boyhood clothes uh, it, it it really hurted us because he, he he has such good good impact in the field and you could see as fans as passionate fans you can see that uh, it was hurtful okay it was it was hurtful to say the least and uh, well it was it was it was bad like really bad yeah, that thing hurt us the most so um, what else do we have this season Mark Albrighton was injured as well however he came back for the last game of the season while he was not his hundred percent but rest assured he was the one of the very few players of the injured players to return other injured players couldn't so the void left in the team was already making us a shallow side and all we had was to hope for a top 4 finish but as the match days progressed the reality hit us and the top 4 finish seemed impossible the results after the restart was somewhat like this what for the first match after the lockdown uh, we got on June 20th Watford versus Leicester we had this as an away game Watford scoring one we scored one and it was a draw I can go with that no problem with that the next game on June 23rd Leicester versus Brighton in the King Power Stadium we drew nil nil so straight away as you can see this match was not a match that you would expect we'd, we would drop points but here was a draw as well then the very next match on June 28th we had FA Cup semi-final against Chelsea we lost that and uh, I can't really complain on that because that's the first time James Madison was in, not in the bench, not in the starting lineup this season and uh, not a bad result losing 1-0 to Chelsea. Chelsea were far more dominant side uh, in the last game so yeah I'll give this one a pass. The next game Everton won 2-1 against Leicester. Again, I see that this game could have been drawn as well. Everton is not that great of a side to lose 2-1 to. On July 4th, we had Leicester playing Crystal Palace in the King Power Stadium. We won the first game of the restart, after the restart, winning 3-0 against Crystal Palace. Good result. Then we had a tough game against Arsenal. We drew it 1-1. So, kudos to the team for holding out Arsenal at bay with 1-1 one, one score line. Then the most heart shattering performance of the season came out. Bournemouth winning 4-1 against Leicester. We have a lot to cover on that game too. I'll tell you in a minute. But before that, let's finish this up. On July 16th, we had Leicester hosting Sheffield United and we won that comfortably with two goals to nil. So that was a very, very good result. Again, on July 19th, Tottenham won against us by three goals to nil and the last game uh, Leicester losing to Manchester United by two goals to nil and I really think that scoreline should have been one nil but Casper really fudged it up so so understand the problem now it is practically not possible for us to cling on to the third position because this was the Premier League and such crucial injuries were always going to hurt us into dropping from the fourth finish in the Premier League. Then the worst of the worst thing happened. A really heart shattering performance happened in the match against Bournemouth as I was telling you. Sanchu who has been a phenomenal centre back all this season did something really stupid. He intentionally committed a disgraceful patulant foul after conceding a goal due to his aggression. That definitely earned him a red card and extra suspension for the remainder of the season. I wrote something that no one can disagree with, even as fans. So after that, now we don't have the ability to go for four defenders in any 
any way because we don't have left back we already are running thin on left back right backs and now the center backs are performing the role of right left backs as well i mean uh, we are running thin is what i mean to say not right back because right back is been taken care of by james justin but you get my point so we are running thing with the left back and the center backs so we have to bring back west morgan who is not match ready who has played one or two matches this entire season and he becomes a regular starter for the remainder of the season that's never a good sign actually i love loved to see him play the way he performed was beyond phenomenal but still he was not starting sonchu was starting sonchu and johnny evans were starting all of the games and suddenly you have to bring back west morgan and he has to deal with a lot of pressure so that was it the problematic season eventually ends in the last day the situation being if we defeat manchester united then we qualify for champions league but if we draw then chelsea must lose to wolverhampton and if we lose we play in the europa league now let's talk about the team we have for the next season they have to bring at least one or two strikers to pair up with jemi vardy in a formation of 442 or 433 and by that i mean prominent strikers who have a reputation and experience in the european competitive stages either europa league caliber player or champions league caliber player because europa league is now very tough because a lot of teams play that tournament who are dominant were once dominant and still have good players so that we can have a great campaign in that bringing in players will surely mean selling or loaning out some of our players but this time benkovic comes back and west morgan will probably not play i don't know about andy king whether he will get to play with uh, didi being so so good at the center defensive midfielder role rashid ghazal will come back from fiorentina but his form looks a bit down so we cannot really really rely on them to perform on a europa or premier league level because even in the small matches we can drop points if we don't rebuild judiciously i have heard rumors to bring luka jovic from real madrid and that would be actually good he can really provide us the that extra edge that we need and vardy is good but he's 33 years old and it would be a good time to take the soul striker load from him and distribute the expectations into others as well we can really sell or loan out ilenacho we should shouldn't sell chilwell or madins in this season when we are playing european football that's the only reason we can do better things in the upcoming season we did well this season too despite the circumstances really if you think about it we have got more of a chance in the europa than we ever did in the champions league and we should be motivated for the sole reason for the next season brendan rogers is the is not the ideal manager we would like but he can stay for the next season because he has proven his worth so liking him him disliking him doesn't really come into question because he has done a phenomenal job so he should stay i would i would have liked to stay in the third position to be honest but injuries man you can't do anything about it there is a lot of promise from the young lads that stepped in like james justin and luke thomas telemans and chaudhry need a bit more of match exposure and quality to create big chances as well telemans needs to work on his conversion rates on a high note i think the transfer window is, is going to be a crucial is going to be crucial in shaping the future for leicester casper was great as always but he did some silly mistakes in the last few games and the and he gifted the goal to lingard which still hurts by the way but he can stay for two more years as a, as goalkeepers can play longer years but i see vardy for another year and then it would be interesting to see what happens so that's it that's my conclusion of this season if you think i deserve your like press the like button and i can do every match day analysis for leicester city next season 
subscribe to the channel for more football related content gameplay videos and etc etc goodbye for now and drop in your thoughts about leicester city football club season in your own words what you disagree or agree with let me read them would love to have your opinions so goodbye for now